What's going on guys? This is uh, going to be a very different kind of video. I've been doing some analysis and essentially I've come to the conclusion what I'm doing isn't working on YouTube. Um, I have more success at Savage Finance than over here. And I think I'm going to take two weeks to reset the content. And I'm going to tell you why I made this decision. And this actually came from Savage Finance. A guy did a video talking about why cars keep you broke. And the videos got like 10, 12,000. I mean, when I came across, I had 5,000 views. And the guy said nothing no different than what I've been saying. Yet, when I do a video that cars will keep you broke, I have people who want to fight with me, I have people who are like, what about leasing? And I'm just sitting there like, what the hell? What, what is going on? And uh, I've come to a conclusion that my ethos of trying to really prepare you guys for real life is somewhat errant. It's not working. Um, I, I'm beginning to think that many people rather believe in a pretty lie than the painful truth. Seriously. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's annoying. It's really annoying. And I'm just going to take me a little break reset the content and come at it from a different vantage point because I watched a video that actually has how to scam 11,000 views 12 hours and I'm just sitting there like what is going on and then also I'm about to say something else I'll watch a white creator who will talk about the same things I am talking about and they'll get way more love. I don't know what it is with us as black people. I, I just don't know what it is. Um, I had a guy who, he supposed I had a fleet of cars. I own 10 cars, right? Actually shows you the 10 cars. We'll actually do a video showing you the titles of the 10 cars. And it's like, they ain't real. They ain't real. And I'm just sitting there like, what is going on? What is going on in this space? Because I can show you receipts and I still have a bunch of people like that ain't real. They ain't real. And um, then I'll see a YouTuber who will talk a good game and never show one receipt and they'll do way better than I am. So I'm probably going to move away from showing receipts. I am probably, because like, like I said, I need a little break. I need a little break. So I'm going to take me a little break. And the reason I'm doing this video is last time I took a break, I had a heart attack and people were like, what, what happened? So nothing bad has happened to me. It's just, I'm going to reset the content. I'm going to reset um, everything I'm doing and I'm going to come at it from a different standpoint because it ain't working over here. I don't know if I'm going to take a break from Savage Finance because Savage Finance, I could put up a video and get way more views over at Savage Finance than over here. Um, don't know. May take a break over there too. But uh, I'm going to do some, and part of the reason I'm taking this break is I'm in this holding pattern with the car business and it's hellified annoying. I'm waiting to hear back about the office. I'm waiting to get the titles. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to hear from the bank. I'm wait. And it's just like, you know, for someone who's had internet businesses where you could just take off and start working and making money, this is hellified annoying. It's just like, dang. So take a little break, come back a little recharged, a little refreshed, because it's wild. 
um, some of my long-term haters have returned. And I'm just sitting there like, why? All I'm gonna do is delete your comment and block you. I'm not gonna talk to you. That's just pointless. You've shown who you are. It's, it's kind of pointless. So we got that going on. And honestly, I'm just frustrated because I got to figure out how to relay content in a manner that's effective yet will get views because um, I, I'm just seeing something that will not work. I saw a video and everything I know, like person was talking about buying a building. You buy a commercial building, I don't care how good your age corporation credit is, you gotta put 25% down. I'm talking about a multi million So you would have had to put down at least a million dollars. And I'm just like, I don't think he has it. And one of the things that I keep seeing, and it's frustrating, is people are looking for pathways on how to cheat and how to game the system. Any video that talks about something where you can get out of the doing the hard work, cheat the system, get around it, take shortcut, these videos do wild, are wildly successful. They're wildly successful. Recently, someone came at Elon Musk on Twitter saying these exact words, that Bitcoin miners will be kicking themselves next quarter when they realize that Elon Musk and Tesla have dumped Bitcoin. On that tweet, Elon Musk hit back, indeed, price of crypto went down again. Now, I did a whole video talking about Elon Musk is playing. And a lot of smart people in the crypto space smell something. They're like, wait a minute. And I got people who are like, once again, like, no, nah, ain't gonna happen. Even if Elon sells, it's not gonna drop. And I'm just like, so I got some work to do because I am putting out, in my opinion, and that's just my opinion. It doesn't really matter if um, people don't watch. That's just my opinion. But I'm putting out facts. I'm putting out relevant things and it is not resonating with the um, current audience. It's not resonating at all because essentially what will happen on this channel, Savage Finance, I've had several videos take off and do really, really well. I have a video. So Savage Finance, which only has, I think 30, 33,000 subscribers, gets more views than this channel, which has 100,000 subscribers. And I, I kind of feel that since I'm telling the truth, that ain't working for the YouTube algorithm because what the algorithm is doing is finding me all of these clowns, all of these moist men. I'm just sitting there like, because when I saw that video, I ain't gonna lie, I got salty. He said the same exact thing that I said about buying cars. And in the comment section, there was person after, you're right, man, you're right, yeah. Best thing I ever did was pay my car off. Yep, yep. I'm just sitting there like, yeah, I have people who want to fight with me about this. Fight. Like, um, give you an example. This just happened. Um, I got 
$40,000 worth of cars that probably at the end of the month is gonna earn me $3,000, which is almost a 10% cash upon cash return in a month. It's more than I can get from the bank, way more. And essentially about 10 months, if I keep those cars, uh, you know, it's, it's a better investment than real estate. It's a better investment than in investing. It's a better investment than crypto. And I had someone that was like, yeah, that's true. But with real estate, you have appreciation. And I was like, I hit him up because essentially I already know how this works. Um, all I'm going to do in two years is sell the car and buy newer cars and do the whole thing over again. Just repeat the cycle. But people want to come at me. And th this is one of the things I'm going to stop doing. Because right now in this hype cycle, everyone thinks they're a financial genius. And I'm going to let the hype cycle die down. And then when we come across these hard times, which are coming, they're coming. Um, and then we're going to see if these voices chime in then, because it's a hype cycle right now. Everyone has exaggerated sense of their abilities. You bought a house in California, it appreciated 3x. Good decision. But that's it happened in California. It happened in New York. It happened nowhere else in the country, except it's happening in Florida. Home prices in Florida because of COVID have gone up 30% in a year, 30%. So we, we've got that, but I'm going to take a break, reset the content come because essentially I wish I could get rid of all the moist men because they're annoying. And I've kind of figured some stuff out with them. I'm a black guy on the YouTube wearing a baseball cap. I don't wear a suit. I don't smoke cigars. And they're like, there ain't no way this Negro can be doing that good. Just ain't no way. Ain't no way. I don't care if he shows me a title to a Porsche and a brand new BMW. I don't care. I don't care if he lives in a million dollar house. I don't care if he lives in a million dollar neighborhood. I don't care if he shows me his paycheck. I don't care if he shows me bank statements. Ain't no way. Cause I said so. The moist parade is one of the most annoying aspects of YouTube. I can show you, I can show you that water is wet and that these folks, no it ain't. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. And you know, why do you moist men watch this channel? Because I'm about to hurt your feelings. Because a lot of you are cowards. You see a pretty woman over there, you won't go talk to her because you are a coward. But you come on YouTube and get behind your keyboard and you get big and bad. It is hilarious. Because one of the reasons I get so much hate is because people are doing so bad. I don't want you to do bad. That's one of the reasons that I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> That's I'm telling you how to do things so you won't be doing bad. And it is rejected because I feel the get over society is much larger than I originally thought. The get over society is huge. The get over society is massive. And that is a big, big issue right now. The get over society, the, um, the changing of America, the shifting of America, because I do a lot of analysis and I look at YouTube videos that are successful and the vast majority of them don't show one damn receipt, show no proof of concept and they're winning. Kind of like 
Oh my God. That conversation I had with my friend. The hoes are winning. Why should I be a good girl? Oh my God, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there in that space. Because it is frustrating to create content, to create useful and helpful content and not have it watched because the YouTube, like, I am firmly convinced the YouTube algorithm just picks people randomly. There's something, the way that it was built, that it's just going to like, hmm, this person, we're going to put them on. Because I understand, I'm in a YouTube mastermind, I understand how it works, but I believe there is bias built into it. Because here's the thing, and this is something I noticed. If you're a black YouTuber, if you're doing cars, you will take off. If you're doing cars, Mr. Organic, Omni and the Hellcat, Tall Guy Reviews. If you're doing cars, you will literally take off. If you're doing comedy, you will take off. If you're doing lifestyle, you will take off. Essentially, if you're a black YouTuber doing entertainment, now, Anthony Logan, who is a conservative YouTuber, is an exception. There's always exceptions. But I've noticed that if you're black, there's a few channels like uh, there's this guy, I think it's Philo Raps. He talks about football players, does really, really well. So if you're talking about sports, entertainment or something like that, or showing a lifestyle channel as a black YouTuber, you can take off. But other than that, it, it gets a little dicey. It gets a little dicey. It gets a little hard. Um, our Rich Journey, they have a really good presentation. They're doing well on YouTube. But how many Our Rich Journey YouTube channels are there? Ask yourself that. It's them. Who else is with them in that area? And um, it's wild. It is really, really wild. But yeah, I'm frustrated right now because the car business is not on pause. I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting for these titles, waiting for, I'm just waiting. I'm just sitting there like, okay, let's just take a little breaky break. Let's just chill out plan on some stuff, work on some stuff that you need to work on and do that. That's what's going to be happening with me for the next two weeks. I'm going to be doing that, working on that stuff. So you're not going to see any videos here. Like I said, I'm doing this to let people know that I didn't die. <laughs> Y'all get worried when I, I don't post on a regular basis. I appreciate that. So, yeah, it's um, we got to change up the content. We got to change up what I'm doing. And part of my frustration is the car thing is working. Everything I got on hire car is gone and it stays gone. I actually had someone do a three day rental on hire car car came back I had the car for 22 hours it was rented again so that's working and you know since I went ahead and bought some data and I've had a lot of comments people like appreciate me telling the truth appreciate me telling the truth because um, I'm giving you data that you just can't find on YouTube because um, People aren't doing it like this. People aren't doing it like this. Um, I, I do think this time next year, Turo will be flooded. I just think it will be flooded. And um, right now, people are pretty much ignoring hire car. Pretty much. So I think that lane is going to be open for a few years. And then... Um, We're going to get back to training. I got sick. I got into the car business. That completely fell off. So I'm going to get back to that. And I'm going to do some other stuff. Because I, I got to sit down and I got to 
plan out my next six months. I got to plan that out because I want to bring the men's channel back, but I don't want to bring it back the way that I had it the first time. And let me explain. I want you guys to be successful men. And essentially what I did, which was working, which worked really well, I was showing you the results without showing you the pathway to get there. And that's really problematic because um, right now, you know, I'm 54 years old. I'm dating a 30 year old who's, who, who's got like a stripper body. And how did I, how did I do that? Because, you know, Erica Williams loves to go on and on and on about these young girls and not dating old men. And in one regard, she's at, they're not dating broke old men. Let's be clear about that. They're not dating broke old men, but they're lined up for dudes with money. <laughs> they lined up. I'm here to tell you they're lined up for dudes with money. And um, I, I'm thinking of calling it the modern gentleman. And also, I'm thinking about starting it and not letting y'all know that I started so I can build a more organic audience because I am tired of these moist men. I don't know, well, I kind of understand what happened because I was on, a, was on a date Saturday night and we were talking and I said, I have the personality where people really, really like me or they really, really don't. And she said, I'm the same way. And I begin to think, my life hasn't always been like that. Uh, when I was younger, I would go places, people would immediately like me. And only since on this social media thing has it um, become so violent, has it become so crazy. And I begin to figure it out. Jealousy's a mofo. I'm in a million dollar neighborhood. And my neighbors who have jobs, most of them, it, it, it became a thing because of the things I was down here doing. I was just down here running my life, running my business. Not, I don't even know what they do. I don't even care what they do. I'm too busy working on, in my business to even pay attention to what they do. But they all up in my business. They all up in my business. And I remember one neighbor got one of my bank statements and it was opened and he returned it. He's like, sorry. And uh, he, he just was looking at me like, how the hell? So one of the things that um, I want to do with this new male channel is get men to take action. That is one of the hardest things to get people to do is to take action to um, Go ahead and really push yourself to take action and go through the gauntlet. And the gauntlet is anytime you try something new, things going to go wrong. The car business. Like I was watching all these Turo videos and I watched a few higher car videos. There are not that many higher car videos. And, um, I even went to the internet, went to forums, and I didn't find this kind of information. So, I made mistakes. I made, I made mistakes, like buying those high-end vehicles for Turo was a mistake. And I want you guys to listen to me. Be very careful about buying a high-end vehicle for Turo, depending upon your market, because, uh, the Porsche, which broke, that they stayed out. Uh, the BMW, I've gotten like two rentals for that. And then um, the Range Rover, nothing. Nothing for the Range Rover. The Range Rover's been on the platform almost two weeks, nothing. So you, you know, and fortunately because used car prices are going through the roof, I can dump these vehicles and only lose the money I paid in sales tax. That's the only money I would lose on those. 
So that would be part of the, the whole, because one of the things I want to do is now that I have proper data and I have um, better information, I want to really start the whole thing. So probably once I get the titles, I'm going to dump these four vehicles and turn those into eight or perhaps 10 vehicles without spending any additional money. Because I can go ahead, I can sell them or I can trade them. And trading them in is probably going to be faster than selling them. Because essentially, uh, here, here's something that's funny. I'm glad that I'm doing this. Like I will never ever put my Porsche on the Toro website because that sucker would go out and stay out. Uh, that Porsche would probably earn me like three to four thousand dollars a month. But this is like one of the things that happen. People go to Toro to rent cars they can't buy. And I had a guy put regular fuel in the, the rental Porsche. And the check engine light came on because he did that. And I'm just sitting there like, I, I'll be pissed. Someone rents my Porsche and they put regular gas in it and jack up the emissions. I'm like, no. And the Porsche and the BMW both run on premium. And I'm just sitting there like, whereas the cars on higher car, uh, they're Acras. Uh, even if you put unleaded in them, they're, they're, they're just going to like laugh at that. So what I want to do, and I got to shift my timelines to August because, you know, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And August will probably be the first month that I'll have everything together. I should have the office. I might even have my dealer's license. Don't know yet. Don't know. And there's really no penalty for me sitting on the money because um, I spent some money on these vehicles and I'm just sitting there like, let's go ahead and fix the mistakes before we spend some more money. Because I know if I buy a vehicle and throw it on a higher car, it's going to go out. And one thing I haven't tested is the $6,000 vehicle theory because here's the issue with the $6,000 vehicles. They all have high miles, like 200, 190 to 250, 190 to 250. And I don't know how that's going to work because that would have to be on a shorter sales cycle. Like you rent this car for six months and then you give me a thousand bucks. Okay. At that point, I'll still be in the car a little bit because essentially each month you can make $700, $800 per car. So if we rent a car for six months, that's $4,800, and they give me $1,000, that's $5,800. So if a $6,000 car, I'll still have like $200 in the car, but I would have gotten the majority of my money back. And I don't know if that's going to work. So one of the things I'm getting ready to do is run several experiments. I've got the higher car experiment, which is working very well. And then I don't know how these $6,000 cars are going to work on higher car, because what I may do is adjust my business model to get these $10,000 cars. I know for a fact, these $10,000 cars work on higher car. They work really well. Um, and I may do that. Don't really know. Don't really know which direction I'm going to go in. I got to sit down and think about it. And during these two weeks, that's what I'm going to be working on. And I've got some video concepts I want to do that literally will take a few days to do these videos. So I'm going to be working on that. Um, but yeah, the kid about to take a break. About to work on some things. And go ahead and do that because you know it, it's kind of funny i know i could take a break and i'll be fine because i didn't make videos heart attack i don't think i made videos for three or four months something like that there was a huge gap and the channel didn't die 
um, people were leaving comments. It's like, where'd this dude go to? And a two week break, I think is gonna be good because I can refresh my programming, do some more research and come at it a different way. And one of the things I am glad I did, I've avoided YouTube beefs. That's just emotionally draining. I had someone that was going to try to start something, I just ignored it and it went away. Um, no YouTube beefs, stick to the content. And another reason I want to start the mail channel is there's some topics that like, I have made the decision that I'm not going to talk about social media, social issues on this channel or Savage Finance. We're going to talk about business and economics here. We're going to talk about business and money over there. And the men's channel would give me an outlet for to talk about certain things that I just cannot talk about here. Because um, like I said, I'm thinking about calling it the modern, general, modern gentleman. And I'm thinking about doing a totally different presentation. Presentation of me just driving and never showing my face. Just a talk over um, these kind of videos. Uh, showing the Porsche, showing the BMW, look, you know, having, take, just simply taking a GoPro and strapping it to my chest um, and just doing them like that. And that would be the whole channel. There's a guy. Um, Google, go to YouTube and look up Subway Sandwiches. You'll find this channel. He just does that. He has a, a camera strapped to his chest. He's just telling stories and he's making, making Subway Sandwiches. Went to like 3 million v <laughs> subscribers in three months. And, you know, essentially I want to activate the YouTube algorithm. Now here's my thought. If I do a voiceover and I never show my face, it won't know that I'm black. I might be errant in that way of thinking. I may, I may not, I don't know. But I'm thinking about doing that, getting that started. Um, and I've got a lot of people who are asking me about the YouTube channel. I'm probably gonna get that crunk again, the beginning of June and Probably one video a week over there. That's probably what I'll do over there. Because a lot of you uh, want to do this YouTube stuff, and let, let's talk about that. First of all, YouTube is a lot of work. And I don't think y'all understand, because y'all see someone who will put up a video and it doesn't look like they put a lot of work into it, and you don't know if that person has shot that video six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. You have no clue. So we're gonna get into that. Um, but YouTube is not quick and it's not easy. It ain't quick. It ain't easy. And you guys have got to understand that you, you take a YouTube course, you still got to do the work. My mastermind costs me a G a month and we only meet four times a month. How many of y'all are gonna put that kind of investment into your YouTube business? Not many of you. Many of you won't do it. It's like, that's just too much money. And that's where you go wrong. Because essentially, if you can pull one thing out of that mastermind per month and apply it to your YouTube channel, because essentially my YouTube channel's easily paying for the mastermind. The YouTube revenue easily pays for that, so. You know, it's just a business expense. But one of the things that I want to do is to expand my audience. And this is something else. I thought about starting a new business channel and not even letting y'all know because what happens is when I let y'all know, I get the good, I get the good folks, and I get these moist men who will just come over there. I'm just sitting there like, you are a hater, bro. Why do you even watch? And they're just irritating. Just like, like this guy, 
made a whole video. Now I did a video in my driveway showing the cars and I'm like, he may have a fleet of cars. He may have a fleet of cars. And I'm going to get off into the economic theory. I have the video and I need to redo it because inflation is going to be hella rough for the average person. We have inflation with used cars. We have inflation with college. We have inflation with housing prices and we have inflation with food. We have inflation with gas. So um, you're already struggling and the struggle is about to get worse. The struggle is, um, like I said, just go ahead and look at what's happening to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is in this decaying orbit, just like it was in 2017. Like once again, 2017, Bitcoin did not crash all at once. It crashed gradually. And that, that's, this is what this Elon Musk thing has done. But once again, I'm probably going to jump into the crypto markets, not because I want to, but because this is where the attention is. Let me just keep it a buck. Um, my viewpoints on crypto are, are not going to change. However, everybody and their mama is talking about crypto. And I'm trying to give practical, sane advice that's literally falling on deaf ears. People like, I don't want to hear that, Glendon. I want to buy my crypto. I want to believe. I want to invest. So I'm going to probably start talking about that and it, it's 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 it, it kind of irritates me like i said this is prob i don't know if this is going to happen because um the thesis is still true if you make fifty thousand dollars a year um you know unless you got lucky and bought dodge coin in january which most people did um this crypto, this hype space is very, it's crazy. The hype space is crazy. And it's, um, it's hard to maneuver from a fundamental standpoint in a hype space because uh, you guys right now, uh, maybe some of you have bought some crypto. Maybe you've made some money. And there's a big difference between making some money and, and versus getting wealthy with crypto. And I feel, especially with Bitcoin, that boat has passed. That boat has passed. And I mean, many people are pinning. And I'm beginning to think Dogecoin is a good example. Dogecoin was driven by hype, 100% hype. There's no fundamentals, nothing. And people are pushing it because they want to get wealthy. They want to get rich. They want to make money. And in this get over economy, which more and more people are joining the ranks of the get over economy, um, people don't want to do work. People uh, like the fire movement, like I made a comment about the fire movement, which I believe is rooted in laziness. This is my opinion. Because as someone who had the ability to retire and retired, I got bored. I got bored. So I, already, I know the whole thing. <clears throat> I know what it's like to retire. I know what it's like to wake up every day and decide to do what I want to do and don't have to worry about money. And I got bored. And many people who are in the fire movement who are honest, like after a few months, they couldn't take it no more. So if you are a productive, energetic person, you got to do something. But a lot of this fire stuff is rooted in being lazy. I just want to wake up and eat bum bums all day long and 
watch cartoons and stuff. That's what a lot of this stuff is rooted in. And you cannot convince me otherwise. Because these people, like, look at the person who's doing fire and look at what they're doing right now. Are these people volunteering? Are they trying to help out the needy? See, I would believe that if someone was volunteering and doing all types of charitable work and it's like, it'd be nice if I, I could do this full time. I would believe that person because they're not trying to reach fire to stop working. They're trying to reach fire so they have more time to do what they want to do. That is a worthy cause. But how many of these folks are actually volunteering? Like I will tell you, uh, I've done some volunteering in the past and you meet the most amazing people. I uh, went to the tool bank, the Atlanta tool bank. I did some stuff for uh, United Way. You meet some of the most amazing people because who can who else can volunteer in the middle of the day? Someone who doesn't have to worry about money. You know, so it's going to be very, very interesting the rest of 2021. And I got to figure out what lane I want to occupy. I got to figure it out because there's a there's a group of you guys who are like they love this stuff. You love the accurate, honest reporting. You love that. And I thank you guys. But there's way too many moist men who are subscribed to this channel who watch this channel just purely to hate. And I don't understand it. I don't watch YouTube channels I don't like. Graham Stephan, once again, the YouTube algorithm pushed a video onto my homepage and I, this would be the 18th time I said I don't want this content. You cannot tell me that the algorithm is not choosing people to push based upon the fact that I have 18 times said I don't want to watch his videos and the algorithm keeps pushing these videos on me. Even though I've indicated I'm not watching them, I don't even watch his videos. Yet it keeps pushing these videos on me. And that's what happens when you get picked by the YouTube algorithm, that it will push your content on everybody, whether they want to watch it or they don't want to watch it. So that, that's something I find to be really interesting because uh, one of the things like, you know, there, there's so many different audience or audiences on YouTube and like the chick with the white snake. I already knew why her videos took off because there's a huge van life audience on YouTube. Massive, massive van life audience on YouTube. And um, I'm just sitting there like I, I can honestly see that why her videos took off. She's an attractive feminine woman who is actually small. So she fits into the paradigm of most men's desirable woman. So that's one thing, that's one reason her channel took off. And also I noticed that when she's got away from van life videos, her videos tanked. They didn't do that well. So the YouTube algorithm will push her van life videos to people in the van life community, which there are millions. There are millions of people living in vans or expire to live in the van or see the adventure. And these are young people because uh, I was having a conversation with a friend that was talking about how her roommate used to have sex in front of her. And be talking to her while dudes like giving her the D, right? And I said, would you do that now? She said, no. So there, there are certain things that happen. Like if I was 20 some years old, I could see living in the van. I can't see it now. So age and positioning has a lot to do with that. But one of the things I want you guys to understand is the goal is to make the content better. The goal is to um, really increase the things that I want to do 
and to increase my reach because I learned a lot from Savage Finance. Staying in one lane, not going all over the place, uh, just talking about certain things. Now, Savage Finance, if I was to start positively talking about crypto, would probably grow because that's where people's headspace is. Um, I heard a, a, a record, I heard a number because essentially it's kind of hard to get this information because the first report I did that 1% of the Western population have held crypto. Then I heard that 15% of the United States uh, population has crypto. And I'm like, 15%? And I'm just sitting there like, I don't know about that. You know, 10%? I, I might believe 10%, but 15%? I don't know. And also, here's something else. With crypto, you got a whole host of problems. Your first thing is you don't want to get hacked. And you cannot buy Dogecoin on Coinbase. So you got to have another wallet. I don't even know. I don't, I'm not buying any Dogecoin. I'm not, I'm not going to take a hit of crack. I'm not. Because essentially, I'm going to stick with um, solid financial principles for my business. But yeah, so that's the that's the the ditty because essentially I want you guys to be successful but I cannot want for you to be successful more than you want to be successful and I think that's where I get into trouble because that's where I get into these arguments because I'm like you know there's certain things I'm just gonna leave alone like right now you can see what I said in Elon Musk video is playing you it's playing out right now and what what one thing that pisses me off is all these folks who come after me on crypto but when I'm right they don't say nothing they don't say a word like 2017 I was battling with people on Facebook I was battling with people on YouTube and I was spot on with my predictions, spot on. And at that one point, they stopped, they stopped leaving comments because it was just like, and you know, Bitcoin's gonna crash again, it's gonna crash hard. That's just the nature of something that isn't built on anything. It's driven by speculation, it's driven by hype, it's driven by this desire for the average person to deploy some cash into something and six months later come out being rich. That's what's driving the crypto markets. There is a group of people who believe in the tech and the fundamentals, I'll, I'll say that. That ain't the majority, that's not what's driving these markets. There are people who have crypto and you ask them about the tech, they couldn't tell you. They don't care about the tech. They don't care, it's like, hey, if this is a way to give me some money, I'm with it. And that's it, that's the beginning and end of their involvement in crypto. And that's why they're in it. So I'll see you guys in two weeks. If you're on the email list, I'll be sending out a bunch of emails, I'll be testing some stuff. So with that, you guys have a great summer.